All right, so the player class is going to be a class, obviously. Uh, whoops, I closed it. Damn, all right, so there we go. So the first thing we need to do then, uh, though, is we need to um, substantiate the definition of the class, if you will. So the way we do that is using an if not defined syntax, which essentially states that if the class has not been yet not yet been defined in the program to define it. Uh, so use if and def, and then you use a full caps version of the file name. So player underscore for the space h. Then you use define, same thing. And now you can put in your, uh, at least I think it's done this way, let me check real quick. Uh, okay, yeah. So then you can put in all your includes. In this case, all we're going to include is um, string, and then std string, or uh, yeah, using std string. Uh, we won't need anything else for this case. Uh, in this case, rather, so include string, oops, and using std string, then class player. And then you can uh, put in the things we need to put in here. So first thing you want to do is uh, denote that uh, you're going to be working in the public uh, space of the class first by putting in public. Uh, it's not really necessary to put in a constructor, but uh, it's I highly recommend that you do if you're going to be using uh, instancing. I'll get into that in a bit. It's a little more complex topic, but a constructor is essentially a function which can be used to create an instance of a class. Um, again, if you're not going to be using an instance of a class, it's not essentially needed. Um, you can do it by doing a uh, just a regular function that can set up the uh, class that you're going to be class uh, variables and stuff. But uh, I always use a constructor because you just never know. So to, to uh, create a constructor, you actually use player and uh, has to be the same as the class name, and then you just um, put it, leave it blank, unless you're going to be passing information to that uh, constructor for creating the class. I'm just going to turn the fan on real quick. It's getting hot as hell in here. So one uh, drawback of having a computer that puts out tons of heat is that it actually turns into a literally a heater. Uh, so we have the player constructor. Um, let's just create some other uh, functions such as um, get uh, to get the variables and set the other variables. Uh, so let's say uh, void. Well, yeah, I guess we'll do the set once first. So string set p name, and we'll pass a, a string of name. Uh, string set p race. The string <coughs> a string of race passed string set uh, p class string of class to be passed and you want to try uh, you might you will need to do something different for this let's we'll use um CLAS just one s so we don't uh, use the class uh, syntax like it's up here one of the drawbacks of doing that one. Uh, let's see, int, or wait, no, these are going to be voids, duh. Because we're not returning anything, we're setting stuff, so we'll use voids because we're not going to be returning anything. Alright, then uh, set php, uh, string of hp, or rather int of hp. Although you could use string if you wanted to. That uh, creates more uh, work, though, for casting the data from a string to an int. Set player mp. Int mp. Uh, let's see, what else do we need? Uh, 
player name, race, class, HP, MP. Uh, we'll leave it at that then. Well, I guess we could do uh, void set player str int str void set player vitality with an int of vit or vit void set player dexterity with an int of dex void set player uh, luck. I guess we'll use the last one there. Int luck. Alright, then we want to go string get p name with no uh, parameters. Pretty much go like that with the rest of these two. Alright, so that pretty much encompasses all the different things you're going to be needing, we'll be needing for this, uh, the public section of this class. Um, we won't have any protected variables, so we'll go right to private. For the private variables, we will have a string, p name for the player name. And normally, uh, what you should probably try to do is put actually uh, tabs in here at a specific distance to, uh, so you can have everything just kind of lined up, because um, if you do it just with a space, things will get out of whack, like I'll show you. For, ex for instance, if we do just this, and we go down to int and do, let's say, p uh, hp, see it's not, it's not in line, so it's kind of messy that way. If you do uh, tabs, you can put each one on a specific line out here, so it looks a little bit uh, nicer, and you, can, you should probably do that with these as well. Um, or I should probably rather, since uh, these are there right now. I also try to organize the uh, the uh, functions based on and variables based on their uh, type uh, alphabetically. So, for example, um, oops. And in case you're wondering why I'm putting all these, every line in uh, C++ has to end with a uh, semicolon, or in C++ and other uh, languages as well. It just denotes that's the end of the line. Uh, so there we have that. So we're going to say uh, get functions. set functions. And normally I'd actually do the uh, do the comments for each of these, but I won't that take too long. Uh, but you generally get uh, what these are going to be for. So int player mp. And in here you can actually also use other classes for these. Um, for instance, you could say uh, range. For instance, if we had the range uh, in here, you got range and then set up a uh, <coughs> uh, reference uh, variable, say p range or p damage range. And what, the ha what happens then is that, um, which we'll see here in a second, I'll leave it in there so I can show, you that, show that to you, but I want to actually use it, uh, in it for anything. Uh, we'll that at the end now. Let's see, uh, int player str player vitality player dexterity 
player luck. And again, making sure things are alphabetically ordered here. Then when you uh, end a class, you need to do the semicolon. Then you need to do an end if, or end um, if define, I think is what it stands for. That just basically closes off the uh, class, or rather the header file. Let's see, header cannot stop. Let's see, header stop cannot be in macro or if block. That shouldn't matter. If it does, I'll figure out uh, how to fix it later. So for random, we're just going to go ahead and move the code over from here. That is this here, the uh, function we have listed here. Uh, let's go and check how it's set up over here real quick. Random.h. So it's just set up as a, all right, uh, random h. So again, we have to do the uh, defining error. And now, we can just go right ahead and paste this into here. And then end... I believe that's exactly how it is over here. Yep. <coughs> of course, you have to include... Well, let's see. No, we only had to include range because we used a range R for here. Uh, we're not going to be doing that one on here, so no worries with that. Hmm, interesting. Alright, so let's move on to range. Again, we're just going to copy the uh, code from another file here. Alright, let's just do it from the other ones. It's already there. Uh, Got to do the f and f. Range. Define uh, range. Uh, and then we'll just copy that struct over here. Okay, so now that's set up. What we have to do now is, let's see, again, I'm going to copy some uh, code over to main here. All right, we're going to close that now. Uh, we also have to include now, though, those header files. Or at least we have to include uh, random to be able to call that. So we didn't use the actual file name in this case, so random.h. We don't need to do um, range because range will actually be uh, included in the uh, random.cpp file. So that's not uh, required. We'll actually go ahead and also include player just to. Uh, Get a head start on that. And we'll also make some uh, references here. 
And essentially what a reference is is just something that will allow you to call upon a class or uh, struct or something. Much like how you use int, it creates uh, int is essentially itself a re creates a reference to that uh, specific uh, type. In the same way, that's what you're doing with um, uh, creating class references. You're creating creating an instance of that class, uh, as much as, as like as you are creating an instance of int by, you know, same as over here. This creates an instance of int named uh, player HP or PHP in this case. Uh, but you're doing that for the class. So we use um, player, full uh, class uh, name there, and then uh, m player for the variable name. And that creates a player class reference. And do the same for random. Or rather, no, we won't need to do that. If it was uh, a class, we probably would have to do that, but we don't have since it's a, uh, there's no class or anything, it's just uh, functions in that file. <coughs> so, let's go ahead and uh, switch back over to the player here. We need to uh, do all the um, declarations, or rather definitions, for these uh, functions. To do so, we need to actually create a new CPP file. So add new item, CPP, call it player. We'll also add another one for random and for, or just for random, wrench doesn't need one. All right, so player. In player, now we need to include the player header, uh, among other things. First, we'll include any uh, of the header files we need from uh, yeah, the uh, actual uh, SDK. Uh, we'll need string. And that's all I think we'll need for this, really. Uh, we're not going to be doing any I.O. Uh, streaming out of uh, this particular uh, file here. Uh, and yes, I forgot the angle brackets. A little uh, issue there. So, uh, header files. Um, in this case, we want to add two files. Include player.h. We also want to include uh, random. Well, that was stupid. That's random selected. All right, and then we want to use uh, std as the the std uh, using thing here. Cd string, since that's all we'll be using. Hopefully, anyway. Uh, now we need to do the constructor as you were seeing it earlier, but in this case we do it differently. There's no type associated with it. You just go player. Uh, semicolon, semicolon, or colon, colon, player. And that uh, accesses the constructor there, and then we'll just leave it blank in this case. Just because all we want to do is create a reference. We don't want to actually create a full-on instance with a different set of variables and all that. We just want to create a uh, instance that we can use to call functions with. Which, in a sense, is the exact same thing as the other way with the variables in it. Um, however, uh, in this case, we don't want to do any of that stuff. Since all the uh, variables are going to be set up by different functions. So now we need to go do all the um, set functions first. So now you need to put in the uh, function type, then the class, and the name of the function. So function void uh, set p name and uh, int name Oops. hmm 
those are voids. Oh, duh. It's a string, not a... Not a... Not an int. It's a string name. Yes, int name. <coughs> um, then uh, we'll do p name, which is the actual player class variable, and make that equal name, which is the past variable. And this way you can pass... Uh, player input or user input into this function to set up the name for the player or user. And we'll step for all the other stuff as well. Void player set p race. Alright, I think that's all of them. <coughs> Except I'm in the wrong bloody CPP file. Alright, now we're at the right place. Um, so, oh, HPMP, duh. I am missing some. Let's go uh, at the very beginning here. Actually, we'll do a little something different here. Player max HP equals HP. I'll have to go back and add these in. Then player HP, which would be the current HP for the player, equals PMP player max HP. Again, you want to do the uh, tabs for multiples to keep them uh, orderly. Do the same for the MP. Alright, now we do the get functions. So again, we have to put in the type of the variable to get return. So let's first do the comment here. So get functions. And let's see, string player get p name. No variables to pass. Then you use return, which returns whatever uh, you uh, place after it. So. Um, in this case, we want to return the player name variable, so we do p name, and so it will return whatever uh, p name contains. And then you can use, uh, as you saw earlier, what I do with the dice program, use the use a variable to contain um, 
whatever is returned to use in a different function. Um, or you can just use the uh, function call itself to uh, get the name. You don't have to use a variable to contain or to hold whatever ver uh, value is returned. And I'll show you, there'll be an example of what I mean with that in a bit here. And once I finish doing this stuff. So I want to do the get race. Return P race. I'm just going to also add some other uh, functions here once I finish uh, to complement the two new variables I'll be adding. Uh, no return, or no passes for this. Uh, return PHP. Int player. Get player max HP. And the reason it's uh, red underline of doomed is because the function doesn't actually exist yet. And even if I had added the, let's, for example, let me add the uh, uh, max variable here. Int pmhp. Now if I go back over here, even though this is added now, you can see up here that uh, it's uh, registering that it's there. If you come down here, you'll notice that it's still in the registering. That's because even though we've added it to the player class, since this function does not belong to the player class yet, this is not in there yet, um, it doesn't know what this is supposed to be for. Um, but if we add this to it, which I'll do, I guess, right now, just to uh, finish that up. Uh, get. Player max HP. And we go back over now, you'll see that it knows what it is. That's because player is part of the, uh, or uh, get uh, player max HP is part of the player class now. <coughs> so we'll continue with that. All right, and there's all the uh, functions done. Let's go ahead and add in the other uh, MP function here. And then add those, uh, vari the other uh, variable here. P, M, M, P. All right. In this case, we do need to add range, though, dot H, since we have that range down there.
right, I think that's everything now for that. Uh, let's go ahead and head over to the range.h file. Uh, that's good. So now, um, save everything. Go ahead and close range. Uh, random.h can be closed. Now I need to add the code in for random. Let's steal it from over here. Go ahead and delete that since we're not using it. <coughs> Again, so we'll include uh, have random there. Don't need to use range uh, since we're not using that. Alright, so now what we need to do is, so it's, we have all this stuff set up now, so we go back to main. Uh, that's all good. Uh, so now we have the class player reference there. Player class reference, I mean. <coughs> and we can go ahead and start uh, writing this thing. Uh, we're actually going to go ahead and do one more function, or one more class. I call it game. Just to handle all the different. Uh, creation functions and stuff like that. Instead of having to prototype everything. Um, new item, dot h. Call it game. Put it up. Uh, let's see. So. Won't use a constructor for this one since there won't be any uh, constructing going on. Well, actually, no, we will need to make one because we'll be using a reference to this class. All right, so let's see. So void game menu. Uh, what else will we need? So, void game player creation and uh, I think that's all we we'll use for this one. Uh, no other variables will be required. I suppose you could just do it like you do the random, but I'd rather use, be able to use it with the uh, game reference just to keep things uh, organized again. So we need to do the end define, and if, and the thing there. All right, and now we can go ahead with uh, what we're going to do here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and call up game menu. Well, first, no, we'll do the loop inside of the game menu. So I won't do anything here as far as. Uh, loops or anything. So I'll just uh, create a game reference. Include the header file for it. Okay. So game, we'll just say G. Uh, game class reference. So all we'll do from this class is just call the game uh, menu function and uh, that'll be all we'll do in the main class. So g g menu. Uh, of course I'll add the uh, underscore get ch and then I'll actually add a count. We'll add a count here. Go to the string. We'll need that. I just want to check something really quick here. Crap. Oh, we're low, down, low on space. I'm just going to uh, 
stop the uh, rendering for a second here and switch drives. Alright, back. Uh, switch it over to my E drive. Um, I don't record too much jokes. I need to do some uh, recording for Saints Row 2 so I can get uh, footage rendered out to upload tomorrow. But, uh, let's go ahead and get back into this. Um, get CH and also include a count stating uh, press any button to end the uh, program. And actually that should be before get CH, otherwise it'll uh, only uh, trigger after you push a button. Alright, so there we go. Um, so now this uh, essentially means that everything that happens in the program will happen from the game menu over in game. Let's go ahead and create the source, the uh, implementation file for game. So, include IO stream. Include string. And I guess we will need it. Um, include CSTD lib. Include C time. Just putting these in in case we need them. We might not actually need them. <coughs> uh, next, we want to uh, include the header files for game player and, or for player and random. I guess yeah, game player and random for all of them. And we'll do a uh, namespace. Alright, so now we want to uh, do the code for this. So, first of all, we need to do the uh, constructor. So, game, game, an empty. Uh, thing there. So now next is going to be the game menu. So we want to go uh, void uh, game g menu um, no, over, no overriding parameters to be put in. And then uh, we need to initialize some variables. So we're going to need um, player choice, which is going to be a character. Char p choice equals blank. Uh, bool quit. Uh, what else do we need? player input, so uh, string p input equals blank. And what else will we need? I think that's it. So now what we want to do is start up a game loop. That's what they're called in the industry. And essentially a game loop is a loop with which in the game is run. Um, so while this loop is running, the game is running. That's essentially what it means. So, while quit So let's put in some uh, basic messaging here. Welcome to Geo 
Ragnarok online text based character creation tool. And so what we can do now here is we can actually pass the references through to the game menu. Um, in a case like this where you have a small program, that's something that you can do, but in larger programs like uh, Space Crusade, I found it's just a lot easier just to, uh, when you don't need to have a specific instance referenced, that um, you can just... Uh, create a new reference to the class. Like for instance, if you're if you are doing a game where you have instances of classes and you have to pass the instances through. Uh, because you can't reinstance a specific instance of a class. And that does sound confusing I know, but in a <coughs> excuse me. In essence what I'm saying is that um, once you create an instance of a class, uh, that instance becomes unique and you have to pass that instance to into a function if you want to be able to access that instance's uh, variables and stuff like that. So like for instance if I did a, let's say I do a, a different uh, instance over here, let's say we have two players. Um, let's go ahead and comment this out real quick. So we could say player player one and then we have player player two. Let's go M player one, M player two, just to keep following that same uh, naming convention. So, what I'm essentially saying is that now this is an instance of player one, and this is an instance of player two. Um, the instance for player two is unique to the one for player one. Um, it has its own values, its own uh, own uh, functions, and everything. Even though it's a copy of the player function or player class, rather, it is in fact a different class. Um, you're basically taking this blueprint for the player class and creating a new uh, a new class from it is essentially what you're doing when you're instancing something. Um, and in order to access the stuff for these classes, you have to pass them through. Now, if you're just using a single class, um, this doesn't apply. You don't have to... Um, pass the references for through you can in fact just create a new reference to the class um, from uh, wherever you're at and it'll be able to access it. But in this case we want to pass these references through at least for the player. So we use uh, M player in here. Then we also have to modify the, the header uh, declaration and the or that yeah, declaration the definition of the in the uh, CPP file. So what we do here is we use a player and m player, and that essentially we'll take m player and put it into here. And over here we do the same thing. So we go uh, player and m player. And then we also have to create a uh, reference or a uh, Include the header, so include player.h in order for this player class reference to make sense to this file. Um, so we have this in there. Now we can go say m player dot um, set p name, and then we pass the p input.
and then I'll send that to the uh, func the the set pname function, and then come back to this uh, this uh, particular function after it's done working the code in from uh, the function that's called. So we'll continue with uh, the other uh, stuff here until we get to the or until we get uh, to the class. After the class, we have to use a different uh, function for that stuff. So uh, here we go. Count. Uh, please enter your characters. And this one we're actually going to have a slightly different f uh, format for this one. And also for the class. We're actually going to use a menu. Or a quasi-menu, if you will. It's actually just going to be a list of counts that will be uh, displayed. Um, let's also go ahead and make another player input, an int player input. And again, we should uh, be doing, or rather, for the equals. String uh, int p input two equals zero. That's just for the. Uh, menu input. Cause when, I, when I do menus, I like to put uh, numbered options instead of lettered ones. It's a lot easier to uh, deal with them, and you can also use cases, uh, or switches in that case, and they're, they're a lot uh, more efficient than using if statements for numbered values, and you'll see why in a second here. <coughs> so, uh, let's just go with the basic gamut of races. Human... Even though this doesn't actually uh, jive very well with uh, Ragnarok Online, it's not meant to be an accurate uh, program, just a test or example program. Uh, dwarf, halfling, Uh, line up properly. That's probably why. Again, this is just me being slightly OCD about keeping things uh, orderly looking, even though it looks weird. Just keeps everything the code looking uh, orderly. I'm going to get rid of that space. Alright, so now we do send. Uh, or wait, now we do the count. Never mind, still do the count. Uh, but this time it's the uh, now we do send. And p input 2. Now there are two ways you can do this. Uh, normally I just do it like this, but you can also create another loop here around uh, this menu here where you can uh, keep looping it until uh, the player enters in a valid choice. So if the player enters, enters a 0 or something over 6, something that's not represented in here, you can actually uh, make it so that the menu keeps looping until they put something valid in, or you can use a default value 
with a switch or if an else, uh, if then else statement, or if then if else uh, if if else uh, else statement, which is well essentially what happens is you can go if blah blah, and then uh, after that you can say else if. Which is essentially you're adding on another uh, else. In other words, if this if this um, condition is not true, then check if this one is. And you can keep doing that indefinitely, and then just use else to close it off, or not at all. Um, but in this case, I'm going to use a switch, uh, and you can use the default uh, d the default uh, case to. Uh, Choose a default option in case the user or player in enters in something that's uh, invalid. So switch p input two and case one. And that's why I have to put just case one. Um, and then we'll set. Um, in this case, we'll also create a new variable up here. Uh, string race, or two, I guess, string race and string class. And now what we can do with this is just say, so if case one, so if these are chose one, uh, set race to human. And of course, break. Case two. You also don't need to use. Uh, it's just a habit of mine. You don't need to use those with cases. Uh, the uh, curly braces. It's just a habit I'm into doing. Uh, but they're not required for cases. Uh, elf. And really, this is all going to be necessary once we start getting free to know this kind of stuff, once we get into actually working on, uh, once we get starting to work on uh, Space Crusade, because uh, it's a lot more complex than this is, for sure. And having this base understanding is going to allow you to better understand what you're seeing when I'm working on it. Um, without me having to go into crazy detailed explanations uh, like I'm doing right now. So it's all this is all purely uh, r proactive expositional work, so I don't have to uh, do a lot of explanations. Uh, let's see, orcs next. And break. Then the default will set to human. Close off the switch there. And now, the reason we did that is because instead of having to call the set race function for every one of those, we can actually just use the race uh, variable and pass that to the uh, Race, set race function and only call it once. So m player dot set race race. And we'll also do that for class now.
Uh, P race, that's right. So now we'll just go ahead and uh, kind of copy this. Uh, let's put the uh, count here. And we're only going to have uh, four classes to choose from. Warrior, Mage, and Thief. And again, using a uh, number of variables there. Count and L. So now again, we will just copy this and modify it as we need to. Three. So, warrior, thief, and or mage. And thief. And it changed all these to class. Alright, set player class and pass the class variable. Alright. <coughs> so, that does it for that stuff. So now we need to actually call a different function from within the game class to do the next part. Alright, so. So we'll say um, p attributes. I uh, won't. Uh, actually, I guess we will need to pass. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, so after we do this, we will uh, display character, uh, I guess attributes, yeah. Um, then I'll go to M player, so, or to the player class, so M player dot, um, say, show p status then we'll have a another menu here do you want to let's see actual say um character 